the idea that you could sort of choose to not speak with a lisp, that if you've got a lisp, that doesn't mean that you're incapable of making the s yeah, sound. Okay. So if you say, like, it, it's more about, if you think about speech, right? It is incredibly complex. A baby goes from going ba ba goo goo ga ga as in stringing together an open vowel and, or, you know, stringing together a vowel and a simple consonant sound. Usually like a ba, a, a da. Yeah. It's very simple of the your sort of plosive, hmm. um, your plosive sounds or your, you know, like the very simple consonant sounds. You string those together. Ba ba da ba da, ma ma da da. All of these things, right? Bobo, baba. That's how babies talk. <laughs> Within the space of about a few years, babies go from that to speaking full bloody sentences. It's insane. And if you think about when you're talking, do you ever think about the sounds that you are making? No, really. No, you read an S on the page and your brain goes. Tss. Yeah. So let's say that when you were learning to talk, right? You learn to make the th sound instead of a s sound. Yeah. It's going to be really, really difficult to pull yourself out of making the th sound automatically. That's why speech therapy can be really difficult. Mm. And there are people who have speech impediments who, if they if they were to sit and focus and think, could probably could physically be able to make that sound and read it and right. read and say a word, um, you know, in a more correct way. Mm -hmm. But it's the amount of conscious effort they need to put into yeah. doing that. I guess I just don't know anything about lisps. I think a lot of it is just like humans. Unless they're told specifically to do something in this specific way, they'll just do it in whatever way comes natural to them. Like mm. even my cousin, who's like 10 now, he had to have speech therapist when he was younger because he kept rolling his R's. It's just this, really? which is really, it's a really weird thing. So he's, rolling the R's would be to make a more sort of sort, yeah, sort he, he, of that. He's just a, this little Irish boy. There's there's no reason for him to be rolling his R's. He used to call my grandpa. And he had <laughs> wow. To go, yeah, Grrrra. it was it was so weird. Like he he went to speech therapy therapy for that, and it's just like he just he just ended up speaking like that. So like a proper sort of Spanish like. Perro, yeah, and there was of. nothing. There was nothing wrong with him, like physically. Oh wow! Yeah, That's, it was yeah, just well, the way that he spoke. Exactly. So what I'm trying to get at here is that these sort of, let's say, speech impediments aren't necessarily down to physical limitations, and we'll, we'll get into more specifically why um, why that sort of voluntary involuntary dichotomy is maybe not the best way to look at it. So that's the list. We've we found out that yeah, according to this one study at least. The stereotype of gay men lisping more than the general population isn't necessarily, you know, um, isn't necessarily entirely untrue. But realistically speaking, it might not be down to anything other than that being the way that gay people talk. It's environment, isn't it? Environmental. It's... You pick it up from your environment. Yeah, it's right? like I started saying slay. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't try and say slay. <laughs> just all my friends started saying slay. And I was like, ah, slay. And exactly. that was just part of my vocabulary. Even when I try not to say it.